I understand uh, one of uh, one of clearly the best offlaners in the game right now, still, uh, but also interestingly playing against one of its hardest counters. So I'm I'm very intrigued because with the Weaver Oracle as well, we'll see which position they slot into. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be a five Oracle. The, of course, in the past, the four Oracle has been uh, kind of pushed around because the magic damage is just amazing. It's always incredible to see what that hero can do. But I'm not really sold, to be honest, especially playing versus an Ember Spirit. We are seeing another Ember Spirit playing versus very, very little lockdown, and we already saw how that's played out already twice today. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Thunder Awaken going to shake things up a little bit here with the Timber Pick. Now, now how does this get shifted? Under normal circumstances, I would say now you just shift the Mars... Uh, into, excuse me, into that five roll, have Pan to play that, but then the Disruptor gets moved to the four, which, now that I think about it, it really isn't going to be that bad. It's just not quite the usual position that we see, and it would leave them with a support duo that can help out in team fights, but maybe aren't the most mobile and maybe not the most survivable either. Yeah, and the only problem with that, of course, if it is a four Disruptor, is, well, you're, you're playing very specifically versus Oracle. So he'll be able to purge off your Thunderstrike. He'll be able to Fate's Edict if he doesn't want to purge it off. So it's not really going to be the most effective hero in that lane. So I understand why they picked Timber. I want to say just because Timber versus Tide is absolutely miserable for a Tide Hunter. Not just that, he also is just a little bit too tanky for heroes like Storm Spirit to just kill right off the bat, pushing out those side lanes. But at the same time, we'll have to see. Because, of course, you mentioned Sacred and Mars. Of course, that is pretty much his top two heroes. The other hero, that being Timbersaw, it feels like he's going to be right at home and that feels like it has to go in his hands. But that definitely puts question marks throughout the rest of the draft. I mean, how... How crazy are we willing to entertain here in terms of the switch up? The Timbersaw could be the three. Maybe maybe you run, what, Mars mid, Ember one, or Disruptor at the four, Mars at the five. I don't... Yeah, it's 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 funky. It's weird. It feels like they need a safe laner, which they undoubtedly do. If they don't need a safe laner, they need building damage because they are not getting objectives uh, anytime soon on Thunder Awaken. At the same time, King of Kings pretty much need a hero in that same vein. They need someone who's not only going to be able to push in and kill a lot of these objectives, but also able to actually kind of play the rest of the game for them. Because whenever they don't have Ravage, well, you're down an initiator, you're down another hero, and that's something that Weaver and Oracle both don't really help you with. I could definitely see them picking a hero up like maybe the Ursa, as I have continued to mention today and continued <laughs> to be proven wrong, or even perhaps the Monkey King, just someone who's going to be able to not only win the lane versus the Timber Saw, but also just put out a little bit more pressure on the map. Just because I think right now, again, both teams are kind of missing that character that fills in the gaps because they're pretty much all in on either damage or control here on both of these sides. Yeah, and that is an interesting point. You've been pounding the drum on the Ursa all day. I, I think it was banned out once? earlier yeah. on i think in our first series but other than that hasn't really been touched the monkey king's shown up once or twice been banned out once as well so those options are there king of kings i mean this is going to be an interesting choice for them they're down to 10 seconds but they don't have last pick here so whatever you pick up you are potentially dangling it just that little bit and okay they go for the troll warlord to round out the lineup so there's your damage, some of your tower taking ability as well, and a hero that, as we saw in the last game, it's it's kind of hard to just bring him down instantly. Yeah, and classic combo, right? Oracle troll, always get the ulti off, always come out of the Oracle ulti fully healed because of that kind of double healing effect. At the same time, am I super sold on the troll? Not really. He, although the phase was a honestly a monumental change and a big buff for his ultimate, do I? think that he's going to be kind of rounded out and rounded up i don't know we'll have to see and now i guess if i'm thunder predator what do i want to pick that's going to win the troll matchup i guess we'll see in a sec here okay. oh no <laughs> that uh that's that's not a fun hero for king of kings to see and oh okay 
that is actually a little bit better than I really had anticipated. That is Matthew Ember Spirit. That is a massive throwback. He was the last guy, really, uh, at least in the West, who was still running that position for Ember for a long time and eventually gave it up because you, you really couldn't justify it anymore if you had the Ember you ran at mid. So Thunder Awaken bringing it back a little bit here and... The heroes changed a little bit, but not so much so that Matthew won't still feel comfortable. He is unbelievably uh, annoying with that hero in particular. Yeah, and I guess it, it feels a little bit bad just because you are going to now have a double melee lane versus the trolls. So those That's axes true. are going to be pretty brutal. But at the same time, it, it makes more sense, to be honest. I, I'm a little bit sad Dark Mago isn't going to be on the Ember just because I feel like that is one of his heroes, one of his five heroes but at the same time you know his mars is just as good and i think has a little bit of a leg up versus the storm spirit where the ember you're definitely conceding the lane a little bit more here but as we speak about with the mid marses he can't drop the ball you have to have a clean game you have to constantly get stuff with your ultimate you constantly have to keep yourself ahead of the curve otherwise you can fall off the face of the earth you can just feel so useless in certain circumstances in which sacred and Picasso are going to need to carry your weight and it's a situation you never want to put your allies in here, especially because Pakaz is going to have his hands full with Benny. He's going to have to be running around the troll. Of course, he's got the leash. He's got the good leash. But that's also where I think Sacred is going to be crucial for actually putting in a lot of that damage. Because instant damage, that's all Sacred this game. That's all the Timbers saw. Everyone else has to wait. Yeah, we outlined a similar scenario that needed to play out uh, when it was Divai who was on that Timber saw, right? Needing that damage source to be there consistently just in case the rest of the lineup can't immediately sort of bring their full force to bear so uh in that instance the timber did not do poorly i would say but the consistency really did sort of suffer over the long term that's something that we're gonna have to see can sacred avoid that pitfall can he continue to have that impact so that that guys can just keep sucking the damage away from the troll warlord because if you can do that if you get a long duration static link who else on the king of king's side is going to be able to take down multiple heroes outside of i guess a storm if he's perfect and even then i'm not sure how much he's going to be able to do to the cores until later in the game yeah it's going to feel rough and that's also where uh, it's kind of funny but yet again lockdown seems to be the issue of one team where the other team just needs to hit their spells, so it's almost like uh, King of Kings is dangling in front of their opponents, and it's about how they're going to respond more so than ever dealing with the response of their own. And we'll see, because of course, once you get Blink Dagger, everything changes on the Tide Hunter. You can actually, uh, if you hit them close enough to the uh, kind of the beginning of your Ravage, then it does feel like an instant stun. But in some cases, you can also just get a BKB and then invalidate the hero. So. We'll have to see, especially because it looks like we're going to have a bit of a, a scuffle in the top rune here. See how this first fight plays out. Bringing multiple heroes over. Dark Mago he doesn't have the spear. It's just a rebuke at level 1, but that is going to push them back enough. No, it isn't. Dunham actually managed to snag it, so... Well, I was asking in the draft, you know, whether they would actually switch up his position. I don't think that was something King of Kings did yesterday in their series, so... It looks like he is just there to take that off lane. Roland, he does a pretty solid job of it there to take away that rune. Now, though, this lane... Oh, I, I mean, if you're, if you're Thunder Awake, this lane kind of sucks. You've got us. Weaver and Tide. They're just going to be continuously bugging the hell out of, maybe not the Razor, but certainly this Disruptor. Panda, he's going to have his work cut out for him. No, unfortunately as well, because... Uh... Overblocked just a little bit, so the wave is just going to immediately push into Dunha, meaning that Hanez gets to block probably both of the camps here. Doesn't really need to be too concerned about his Tide Hunter's well being. But uh, finally, we get to take a look at this new ring 320 units forward. The offlane tower looks a little bit weird. It definitely feels a little bit weird, but it's just impossible to actually push an offlaner out from his wave now. He just has a lot less space to work with than. Sure, this pole is right here, but it's so simple for the Weaver to run interference that getting this creep wave under control is going to come really more so down to the small camp pulling than ever playing up on him like this. So I think Dire offlane is just far superior. And that's kind of been what we've seen 
kind of consistently across these first couple of games on the new patch. The off lane for the dire side becomes a little bit easier because you've got more room to breathe, and we've seen those position four heroes in this lane with a lot more room to operate in terms of maneuvering into that jungle, getting vision, stealing the runes, uh, things of that nature. And ooh, on it, dropping a little bit low, but it looks like he's going to be okay. But it kind of feels like over on the opposing side of things, it it hasn't been a symmetrical change. The excuse me, the radiant fours have not quite shown the same emphasis in terms of pushing forward, mostly because. It's not an area that they usually like to operate, whereas in the opposing side of the map, your dire uh, support was kind of used to maneuvering through that particular section of the map. As Saram, that's ah, too far forward. He's going to get hit up. They need to close the gap as sacred. There we go. Timber chains forward, gets the kill. That's first blood going Thunder Awakens way. Oh, super duper tight. Really nice line from them. And Matthew doesn't even have a Blightstone or uh, an orb. It's really just off of them landing their spells and just the constant harass here. Not to mention that one of the big benefits of playing versus that troll warlord is you very well see everybody's got stick charges. Everybody has so many, there's so much more mana to work with just because they need to use so many of their spells here. And Serem is just constantly bullied just a little bit, but looks like he is going to try and go for the uh, small camp stack here. Yes. Very low in that bottom lane. He's able to get out just in time, salve heal him up, but... Well, as you as you sort of said in the draft, it, it doesn't matter. 7.31 brought some changes, but Weaver's still Weaver. He's just going to continue to try and be that annoying presence in the lane. Didn't get the kill, but forces out some regen early on. And over on the other side of the map, Benny's actually now the one getting bullied up a little bit. And he's got to be careful. Matthew, on this position for Ember, took an early point up in those Searing Chains. So if you really do try to push in, try to use those Whirling Axes, you're one route away from... Just kind of standing there with nothing to really do. Yeah, and we'll have to see where and when Matthew decides to leave. Of course, that boundary rune is right there, and it looks like actually the first time we'll see a mid laner make the walk over to take it. And got a camp over here if he wants to stack it, but there's also a water rune to go for. Maybe, maybe that's the new rotation. Stack the large camp, get the bounty, go for the water. But Matthew, he's just a step behind, unfortunately. Yeah, there you go. Some potential solutions there. If you can make that little circuit through your own jungle, there's still ways to do it. It does keep you out of lane for maybe a little bit longer than it used to be, but... Mini trying to take advantage of it. He just doesn't quite have the damage there to actually go on a Dark Mega at this point, so... Not going to be able to find any kills there, but if you're the Storm... That's really just a secondary priority right now. Get your levels, take some farm... Ooh. Take some farm from the side camp when you can. Don't end up dying to Dark Mago somehow, and should be just fine at this stage. Oh, he's gonna oh, go he's for done. it. Oh. I don't know. I don't know that the remnant actually hit oh, hit the Mars. I think he was able to avoid that damage. Might have hopped on the creep, and because of that, your Mars goes back in, throws the spear. Mini is the one to go down, and a uh, game of inches, right? If he's able to get that little bit of extra damage, I think he can find the kill and walk away instead. Dark Mega gets his first kill. It's the second of the game for Thunder Awaken. Yep, and meanwhile, top, they're really? just diving. Oh, oh, boy. Uh, Sacred might want to be... Actually, no, he's got stick charges. He doesn't have to be too careful here, but now Matthew wants in. Slide of Fist is there for the kill. Uh, Courier, there you go. Thought about it for a moment, but he will take it down. And now if you're Benny, I don't know about this one. He's going to get the root down, but you really can't afford to chase this any further as the creeps kind of get the job done. Matthew does fall, but... This top lane, it's just all about this pressure. Benny, well, he's still farming relatively well, but he's not getting free farm, that's for sure. This offlane duo for Thunder Awaken just really are trying to make it as hard as possible for him, force him to fight for really every last that he can get. Yeah, and really, now Sacred gets pretty much everything he could possibly want. Gets a full creep wave, gets to bring it back, and yep, because picked up on us. Unfortunate. That's just. That's simple. That's a level one kinetic field, but it just allows Pekas to come in and get that full link. And now Dunha, uh, he, he's not that tanky. There's still damage from the static link to work with. So you are durable, but against three heroes and bonus damage, not going to be able to get himself away. So well, Pekas and Panda get the first kill by themselves. Matthew rotates in for the second and Thunder Awaken 5-1 to open up this match. So they are trying to... 
push the pace a little bit here as Matthew... That's a bit unfortunate. It's a nice rotation, but he did get hit up by the scan. So they should suspect he's in the area. Mini is just going to sort of hang out under his tower for a bit. But we're still going to go. There's the arena into the spear stun and Mini. Uh, the scan helps, but it's just not enough. With that arena play, there's just too much lockdown. Yeah, and that's exactly what you need. That's your easy pick. That's your first kill. And it feels like, you know, you can get the ball rolling if you can start up here. And that's a lot of Hane. damage on Hanez. Okay. That's just... That's that's casual. He throws a spear and realizes, a, like, a second later, oh, I, I actually hit something, and we can kill this. So, they take down the Weaver. Matthew, yeah, you can't quite dodge it that way, but he's still okay. The Glimpse pulls away really any significant threat, so Rem can't do it by himself, and Mini now has to perform the Walk of Shame back to that mid-tier one. Yeah, and I think, really, that's where, when the Storm Spirit syncs up with the Tidehunter, do they have enough magic damage? Will I have enough kind of gas in the tank to get a pick, get a kill? They would love to take out Razor, but Pekan already has a Falcon Blade. He's already moved deeper into his jungle, and he is honestly just running away with everything right now. Net worth wise, he's almost doubled over the Tide Hunter in lane. He has really just rocked it. Meanwhile, mid, look at Dark Mango and Matthew trying to find something, but they could have delayed that ever so slightly. The arena was back up in just a few seconds. Without that, eh, the play becomes hard. Even with it, the play is pretty damn hard at this point because the storm should have the ball lightning, so. Catching Mini by surprise should not be easy, but... Well, they don't get what they want, but Dark Mago just pushes back mid. Now they're actually going to make the jump themselves on the King of Kings side. And I don't think, yeah, he's not going to be able to get out of this one. Panda TP's in, though. Um, okay, there it is. The glimpse comes through, the haste is there, but the kinetic field forms in time. That was, that was a close one. Again, pointed out the last time they went for that trap play... Level 1 Kinetic Field, but hey, it's the job done. Keeps the Storm Spirit locked in place, and yeah, you lose Dark Mago, but at least you made it a pretty valuable trade. King of Kings still comes away with more gold than their opponents, but if you have to sacrifice the Storm every time you want to go after that kill, it's uh, not really going to pay off for you in the long run. Is Benny? Benny, no. Almost just dies to the Shock Room, and now Dark Mago's in. He's, he's gone. <laughs> he's just dead. Wow. Um... Uh, I mean, we get the benefit of seeing the entire map there, but if you're Benny, I don't know. Timbersaw's playing that far up on you. Feels like somebody's coming in to help out, and to Benny's credit, Dark Mago only gets into position there because he uses the Tumblr's toy first, so I don't know. Kind of hard to fully see that one coming, but compounded with the other issues King of Kings have had so far, it's just, it's really feeling like every break is kind of going against them in the first 10 minutes here. Yeah, and of course... Kind of drafted for it, right? Mars versus Storm, that's advantageous. Razor versus Tide, that's very advantageous. And Troll doesn't have enough damage to actually kill the Timbersaw unless you go for the Maelstrom build. So there's really not a lot going for him right now. Not saying that the Troll should go for the Maelstrom build, but that's what we would see, I'd say, in the past. And Mini's playing with Pandaboo right here. And well, okay. take down Surem oh, first, and they actually, they still got it. That's... Wow, I thought they were just kind of giving up and taking the easier kill they're going after Serem, but they get both of them, and Mini... Uh... Well, that's another setback. 0-4 on the Storm Spirit. Not unrecoverable, I guess, but... Jeez, oh, this is a rough start, really, and the Storm was the one that you were sort of looking at on this King of Kings side to be the one to... Maybe sort of lead them into the mid-game stage. That's just not possible right now. Yeah, Mulku's here. Oh Sacred. boy. Ready to tank, but Hanez will again ravage. Okay. Big ravage onto three. Might be able to get Dark Mago here with a little bit more. Pakas is going to come into the picture. Not in time to save his buddy, though, in Mini. Gonna get trapped up. He's able to zip out with what little mana he has left, but they are chasing him down. They know now. Doesn't have the mana to get himself out, but Serem coming in, dropping the ult. Is that going to be enough, though? Mini's still taking a lot of damage, and there's really no healing coming out onto him. And it's not gonna be enough. Mini falls. Serem dead. Danha alone under his own tier two. He will not escape. He's stuck inside of the kinetic. Back as will take him down, and 
takes them a little bit of extra time there, but Thunder Awaken, they just sort of clean sweep that. They lose Dark Mago, but four kills down. The Oracle used his ult, wasn't able to save his teammate. Just the exact team fight that you want right now to further push their advantage. Yeah, and really, they're just playing so well with their abilities right now. It doesn't oh, feel man. like anything's wasted, and yeah. Honestly, he just gets clipped. He gets clipped by one spell, and Dark Mago is just bawling out of control. Five, two, and four for the mid-Mars. Went for the Blink Dagger first. He's actually going after the Yule Scepter as that second item, so really trying to emphasize getting in, getting the lockdown, making sure a hero like the Storm can't do, well, what he just did there, zipping away, but that is going to be an issue. If Mini's survivability and mobility can sort of be taken away from him, that's at this point in the game, kind of all the Storm Spirit has going for himself, so... Not an ideal circumstance for King of Kings, but as you said, they sort of knew that this was going to be the scenario, right? They're playing the long con here, but... You gotta make sure you don't fall too far behind. 16-3 to 3 in terms of the kill count, they're trailing by nearly 5,000 net worth in the first 12 minutes. There's biding your time, and then there's situations like this, where you just maybe falling further behind than you can come back from as Matthew. Gonna catch up to Benny, they're looking for the damage. Serem does not have the ult to save his teammate as Dark Mago blinks in, drops the arena, gets the spear stun down. They're actually trying to go after Serem first, because Benny popped the ult in time, but it's not gonna matter. Serem falls, Benny might be able to get one if he's fortunate, but Dark Mago is just a little bit too tanky. Not gonna be able to find the kill, and Thunder Awaken just keep on pushing it forward. Yeah, and at the same time, you have Mini trying to make plays on the other side of the map, but every single time he thinks he has a pickoff, it's a Thunder Awaken member with two or three who are suddenly just able there to back each other up. So a lot of his mana is not ending up going towards kills. It's not ending up going towards his farm. So Mini is just so far behind right now from where Storm Spirit should be. This is a really ugly start to his game. Oh no. Just leave, just, just leave Hane alone. The, the man has suffered enough. Leave him, leave him be. Will they do so though? No, they're gonna go after Benny instead. That's a much bigger prize. They get the Static Storm down. No ult coming out. Serem, he tried to get into position, but he gets locked down and taken out before he can pop the ult. So there is no save there for Benny. Minnie's now out of mana, trying to get back into his own base. There's a Ravage from Dunhow though. That is gonna be enough to keep Minnie alive. Potentially a Sacred. No, I spoke too soon. Dive straight in for the kill. Meanwhile, back mid, Dunhow. His sacrifice, not only does it not save his teammate, can't keep himself alive either, can't set up for any kills, and this, I mean, ET, this is, this is a slaughter. 22 kills in 14 minutes for Thunder Awaken. They came ready to play, oh, and they're no. going for even more. Hane, let him live. Have mercy on my boy. No. <laughs> oh, no. Matthew says, no, hell no, I'm not letting him live. Taking him down, 23rd kill on the board, and... What what do you do, E.T., other than just wait it out? I'm not sure they can anymore. They're just falling so, so far behind. I, I think, really, they need to find a way, give space to Mini, let him get his Kaya. As soon as he gets his Kaya, we smoke up, we use the Ravage, we're not going to get our Blimp Dagger in time, it doesn't matter, but they just need to pour everything onto one of these heroes and then get something in return, because this just can't keep happening. And, well, that's your oh. false promise. Okay, Weaver stays alive, he'll time-lapse now as well, so he's not dead yet, but as you said, that's false promise used, and oh god, Hane, he, he doesn't even get out, that's just brutal. Another death for him, Dark Mago picks up the kill, and Mini is... Mini is currently hiding? Yeah, he's he's just gonna zip out, but Dark Mago has a blink, you need to keep going. He's gonna continue to zip, but oh, it's gonna no. be the chase, can he close the gap? No. It's not yet, but that means Dark Mago, he's going to run right into Dunhow. He actually misses the spear, but he's still pushing. With Sacred coming in, yeah, Mini, you just got to get all the way back into the base, but now Dunhow's in trouble. He's going to get glimpsed back into the Static Storm. They throw down the uh, Kinetic Field as well, and there's just nothing going here. Tidehunter taken down, and that's just so strange. I mean, they go after one kill. If they get it, cool. If they don't get it, there's another hero. Let's just jump in onto that one. And if you don't get that kill, well, there's another hero. Let's jump in onto that one. Thunder Awakener just able to chain aggression to a just terrifying extent. And, and that really is the issue with that entire play. It's just none of this time Mini is he's not farming, he's not progressing, he's not getting levels, he's just continuing to fall behind the eight ball here. And 
I mean, for instance, he's a full level behind the four position Ember Spirit right now. There's just been so many kills given over to their opponents and oh Benny, you, that's the one here you can't lose and maybe you get okay. safer here. This would be a huge amount of XP. They got Perfect. it. Serem, okay. Serem kind of going to the kill. That's been unfortunate, but now here comes Dark Mago looking for his revenge. They jump in on the Benny. Can they kill him before the ult comes out? Yes, they can. Benny down. The rest of the team still trapped up inside of that arena. They are going to get the Ravage off though from Dunhouse, so that should be enough to get them away. But I think getting away is the operative word here. Uh, Hane, Hane did not hear that word though. He goes in. He gets caught. Panda will be taken down in exchange though, and Mini, very importantly, is the one who gets that kill. They desperately need gold into their into their mid laner's hands is done how that's a problem spear stun comes out rebuke pushes him back mini though is going in but your health is not in a good spot serem able to bail him out with the ult though so looks like the storm spirit will fall back it was worth a shot and at this point if you're king of kings you kind of have to take some of these risks i mean you're down 7k pre 20 minutes if you don't go for plays like that then there's really not much else for them to try but it works out they got sacred they take down the disruptor so there's hope, as you said. If you sort of get that Kaya going, if you jump in onto one hero and just throw everything you've got, you can still find these kills, and kills are not teamfight wins, but you're definitely not getting teamfight wins right now on the King of Kings side. Definitely not, and... Okay, how Thunder Awaken kind of translate their lead into objectives is the new name of the game. Killing heroes is going to still be worth quite a lot right now, but they need to turn those into actual buildings and map control. Otherwise, they're going to find a little bit of struggle here, and okay. Sacred. We'll track down the kill. Oh, goodness. Yeah, that's Blimp. a problem, yep. Glimps Mini back into the Static Storm. He will fall. Dunhow gonna get run down as well, and... Well, three kills and a chance to maybe push out a tower. Hane, is this where you want you to be? Run. Okay. Well, sure. He'll get himself out of there as... Oh, God, Benny. Just hanging out mid, Pacas comes in, pops the ult, gets down that static link, and well, at this point the Weaver, it really doesn't matter whether he lives or not, because you have lost your carry once again, 1 and 5 now for that troll, so the heroes who need to be farming right now are the ones who are kind of getting suckered into taking these fights, and they're losing over and over again. The Panabu is just messing around with Hanes, who is desperately fighting for his life, but... Unfortunately, they need to go for these plays, and Thunder Awaken still need to solve the problem, which is how do they actually get objectives in this game, but they keep coming to them. I don't know if you want to keep doing this, and okay. Mago is low. This would be a big kill. They managed to take him down. He didn't pop that wand in time, so... Okay. They find the kill, but now, yeah, they need to deal with this. Sacred can still push the tower. Cannot really afford to give up too much in the way of map control right now, but... Do they have enough strength to go in against both Sacred and Pacas here? I'm gonna give it a try. They don't really have much of a choice, but it's just gonna be a tough fight for them. And Sacred just wants to push all the way in, bullying that Tide Hunter up a bit. But now Mini makes his move. That's gonna be the Static Storm thrown down, only connecting onto the Tide though. So maybe there's a way forward here for King of Kings in terms of defense, but it is rapidly falling apart. Dunhow dies. Serem dead. Hane is not gonna make it out either. And despite the fact that that Static is only onto the Tide. That was really all Thunder Awaken needed. Once the threat of the Ravage is taken off the table, they just felt confident enough to push in to every single hero that was hanging out around that tier two. Yeah, and now it's blasted open, more or less. You get to take, really losing this central tier two tower is that important. As soon as it breaks, suddenly your outpost is not defendable. Suddenly the rest of your tier twos look that much easier. And that's where, unfortunately, looking at King of Kings, it's just nothing is really accelerating them forward. And that's just another unfortunate kill onto Mini. But the, the, right now, the light at the end of the tunnel isn't even really there. It's it's Benny trying to find a BKB and a damage item before the game is already said and over. You know, Dark Mago's at your tier 3 tower causing hell for Dunha and Serem, and they're just dead. Nothing you can do. Triple and kill. it's so sad. Because now, oh, oh, they're even TPing back. Oh, is Benny caught? It's the Glimpse well, going to pull him in. Just no mercy from this Thunder Awakened squad. And Benny's going to try to fight, but there's going to be the Disarm. They've got the, uh, excuse me, the Halberd, and they're high-fiving each other mid-kill. But boys, come on, let's... It's, it's 
take it back a step, maybe. Just just that little bit. I mean, that's that's harsh. They've got nearly 40 kills. They've got nearly two kills a minute right now. They are they're feeling themselves right now for sure. But uh, it, it's just hard. It's hard to even in commentate because it, it just keeps happening. There's they another... just have so much. They just have too much. Mini gets picked off. And yeah, I feel like I'm saying the same sentence 42 times in a row. But it's because the same thing is happening. Thunder Awaken, they just keep getting the same initiation over and over again. And King of Kings cannot get out of the way of it at this point. As the middle lane of Rax will be taken in its entirety. We are 22 minutes in. Thunder Awaken have a 17k net worth lead. They've taken a full lane of Rax. And it's... You're going to have to stack miracles on top of miracles at this point for King of Kings to really mount this comeback. It is just... I mean, I guess not quite hopeless, but as close as you can possibly get. Yeah, and, and the kicker is that they can't even kill Roche. Their, their lineup, like, they can't do that. <laughs> they can they can find kills and they can almost kill objectives. And that's all that their lineup needs to do in this game because of how staggering a lead they've been able to accumulate. And uh, we're smoked up. We're looking for something. We're still, I think, two components for both of our BKBs on our cores, but they might even just concede the top rank so that way they could even hope to look for those bigger items because as of right now, there is no way they find a fight. And if they stick around, they show anywhere for too long, it is immediate response from Sacred, from Dark Mega, from Panabu, just looking for the picks. And here we go. Dark Mega comes in. There's going to be the Spear stun. Meanwhile, Static Link is going to keep the Weaver out of the equation. But the Ravage does come through from Dunhow, but Pekas doesn't care. He just pushes in. He's got the Static Link onto Benny. Benny is forced to TP out under the cover of Sir Fem's ult. So, I mean, you get your core out of there, but he has no damage left to work with, and both of the supports have gone down. Tidehunter now on the run. Gonna get hit up by the Spear Stun and finished off. Pekas is 11-0 and 11 after that double kill, and... At a certain point, yeah, okay, I was about yeah. to say, if you're King of Kings, like, how much longer do you take this? This is just a pummeling, and the GG will be called Thunder Awaken. A uh, bit of a statement in game one. That statement is get the hell out of our server. They take the victory pretty decisively. No, that was absolutely ridiculous, to be honest. I mean, really just one of the, the cleanest, I think, games of Dota I've seen in a while. They did everything, almost everything right. The one or two times they got caught off guard, it's whenever they get three-man ravaged or they die to the damage coming in from Oracle as well as the entirety of Storm's mana pool. The King of Kings, you can't really pardon them for not trying, though. Mini, he did everything. He tried the, to find a pick off top. He tried to find picks mid. He tried to find picks everywhere. But I think that stubbornness is really what ended them kind of costing them the game was just that your other option is you farm. You use your mana pool to farm. You use it to accelerate and find your item timings instead. I think he was so focused on playing for those kills that you kind of lost focus in the game. And that's where Thunder Predator, where they have that easy sync up, they have that damage coming from their offlane or something that you don't on King of Kings. There was just that little bit of buffer where Thunder Predator, they can bring five heroes. They can bring everyone to get involved, and then they just run over you. Where King of Kings, again, they're item-based, they're timing-based, they need to buy, they need to kind of sit on their hands while they wait for each other to catch up, and they just got no time. Thunder Predator just did not give them absolutely anything. It, it's honestly just a beautiful game of Dota. Yeah, they were just pushing directly into their opponents really from the very start. Even that first fight in the river for the bounty runes, which... Uh, King of Kings was able to get that bounty rune, but that was basically the last time uh, trying to fight straight up against Thunder Awaken actually worked in their favor. Everything from that point on was just absolute devastation. Thunder Awaken uh, out draft, out play, out execute, really everything. As you said, it was it was about the perfect game from them, and it nets them the win here in game one. The question is, can King of Kings now make the adjustment? They got knocked down, sucker punched there in that first game, but Game 2 gives them a shot at redemption. 1-1 one, one split still gets you points on the board, but we'll have to see what it is they try to do here to change things up because this strategy in Game 1 got absolutely uh, run over, basically. So we shall see what Game 2 has in store. We're about 10 minutes away from that draft here, so we'll be stepping away for just a little bit to get the teams ready, and we'll be back with the final game of the day.